The Columbia River is a vital resource to nearly a million people who live downstream and who rely on this river for recreation and their livelihood. For years, nine nuclear reactors along the Columbia River were production workhorses, part of the Manhattan Project, producing plutonium for our nation's defenses. Today, the reactors are no longer operational and important cleanup work is underway across the site. At the very north of the Hanford site, just 400 yards from the Columbia River, sits the K-West reactor. The reactor was used in the plutonium production process and was shut down in the early 1970s. Inside the reactor's fuel storage basin, 35 cubic yards of highly radioactive sludge sit in containers under 17 feet of water. Sludge is a gray, silt-like mixture of particles that are less than one quarter inch in diameter, resulting from the corrosion of fuel stored underwater, and also includes soil and sand that have entered the fuel pool over the years of operation. The radioactive sludge is considered one of the top safety and health risks on the Hanford site. To safely move it away from the river requires careful coordination and planning. The U.S. Department of Energy Richland Operations Office and contractor CH2M Hill Plateau Remediation Company are making progress toward moving the first shipment of sludge away from the river by the Tri-Party Agreement milestone of September 30th, 2018. This is really the, the, the cultural gem, the environmental gem, geological gem of this whole area is this river. So we feel very much invested in doing what we can to protect it. Removing the sludge is a key element of doing that protection. Sludge removal is also needed before the fuel storage basin can be demolished and disposed of and contaminated soil under the basin can be cleaned up. The project will reduce life cycle costs and is an important priority for regulators, the community and the employees who work here. I live here and it's important to me that, the, that we, that we uh, get the Columbia River in a safe condition because my family lives here. The majority of the sludge came from the K-East reactor, a few hundred yards away. It was transferred from the K-East reactor to the K-West reactor in 2007, allowing CH2M to demolish the K-East reactor basin. Today, the K-East reactor is in interim surveillance mode, while nearby the K-West reactor area has been a beehive of construction activity. From placing forms, lifting structural steel, pouring concrete, over the last couple of years, crews have been working hard to complete a key component of the effort to move sludge away from the river. If you look at construction activities that we started uh, October 2013, two years later, we're done with construction, and by mid to late November, we'll be done with testing. So that's a significant accomplishment. The newly completed sludge treatment annex will house much of the equipment necessary to transfer the sludge from the basin and into casks for transportation away from the river to the central plateau for storage. Construction completion was years in the making. CH2M oversaw construction of this hazard category 2 nuclear facility built to exacting seismic, fire protection, quality and other specifications to ensure employee, environmental and public safety. Again, HazCat 2 nuclear facility, all the pedigree that goes with the facility, the commercial grade dedication, um, the attention to detail by the design authorities, the QA folks that are involved, the subcontractors, that's significant. So yeah, it's, it's very exciting to have ground through this for many years back starting in 2008 and here we are in 2015 and by gosh it's going to happen. While the annex will remain empty for the time being, the effort to move sludge away from the river continues at other site locations with a replica facility about 20 miles away. At the Material and Storage Facility, or MASSIF, in the 400 area, load after load of sludge removal equipment is arriving. Installed in MASSIF is a full-scale replica of the K-West fuel storage basin and the newly constructed annex. CH2M led the development of the full-scale mock-up facility to test and train on the sludge retrieval and transfer technology CH2M engineers also developed with worker input. I'm being sincere in saying this. This is, I'm very impressed. Very impressed with uh, this massive facility, how the engineers have cleverly implemented engineered controls. Um, the best way to describe it is we've We've improved upon what we've done in the past. We're, we're, we are learning and getting better. And this, this mock-up is incredible. I'm very impressed with it. 
The full-scale mock-up makes this one-of-a-kind project more efficient and safer by giving workers the right tools and training to resolve unanticipated issues in a contamination-free area before work starts. During the coming months, crews will install the production equipment for testing and training at Massif before moving the production equipment to the K-West Basin and Annex, where it will eventually go into service. Back to the K-West area and inside the basin, work is underway to prepare for sludge retrieval. Over the next few months, workers wearing purifying air respirators and other safety equipment will modify the sludge containers to accept special lids that will allow sludge retrieval equipment to extract the sludge from those containers and pump it to the annex. It's a difficult job working in extensive safety equipment and relying on cameras to help manipulate long-reach tools to conduct the work underwater. The actual work of using a pole tool, you're looking through the grate, trying to hook that item on um, and at the same time you have to look at a camera or a video of a camera that's also on the work and try to make sure you pick it up. Workers are highly trained on ergonomics to avoid strains due to repetitive movements. Due to these physical limitations workers perform these tasks in two to four hour intervals. Once the sludge is pumped from containers in the basin to the annex and into casks it will be transported to the central plateau for storage at tea plant. This past year, crews entered the Tea Plant Canyon for the first time in three years to begin preparing the canyon to accept sludge canisters. Crews will perform preventative maintenance and ensure safety and radiological systems are in compliance ahead of canyon modifications needed to accept the sludge containers. A lot has been accomplished toward the mission of removing sludge from the K-West Basin and preparing for the final closure activities at the K-West Reactor Site and much more is to come as CH2M and the Department of Energy make progress towards shipping the first container of sludge away from the river by September 2018. The cleanup here at K Basins and all of Hanford is because we have a responsibility to leave this place as clean as possible for future generations. My kids, my grandkids and their children and indeed everybody's children's children to be able to enjoy this area, this river, this community and uh, enjoy it forever.